Right, I'll tune back in in a second. I'm gonna find... Hey guys, follow my journey as I drag my beautiful old cat kicking and screaming into the 21st century. Uh, a lot of the jobs I'm doing, completely first time, I'm a complete novice, learning as I go, and hopefully some of you guys can learn from some of my mistakes. Some of it's worked really well, and some of it is absolute sheer craziness, but somehow I've still managed to put it off. Uh, please hit the like and subscribe button if you'd like to uh, follow my progress. Hey guys, don't ever let it be said that I'm uh, predictable. So my next project, and this is the biggie for me, um, so I looked at hardwood for a rubbing stake, a couple of K, a sheet of HDPE, 15 under quid, you know, I've got to cut it myself. A place called Kedal, K-E-D, spit it out, K-E-D-E-L. I'll put a link in the uh, description below. Absolutely amazing, okay? These guys make plastic wood out of old CD cases. So it's recycling, it's sustainability, um, and when you put it on the boat, no matter where you put it, it's impervious to water, UV, you know, the works. This cost me, top of my head, £350 delivered. So I bought eight lengths at 3.6 metres, 30 millimetres wide, 70 millimetres tall, and it's perfectly square. It's really bendy. Um, yeah, it's just amazing. So this is my two lengths I've got basically spare here for odds and sods. You might hear it in the background, I've got my friend's bench table router running. And what I'm doing is I'm creating the step that is required to go between the moulds. So this step here. So, the rather large black mess there. And ultimately that's plastic and I'm right next to the river. So as soon as I'm done, I'll be hoovering all that up. And I'm hoovering the car park and it's a bit mental. I should have put a sheet down or something. But it, it was a little trial and it's turned into doing all them. So I'm going to do my last one, which I'll film doing. Um, and then, yeah, then I'll be then I'll be hoovering up, hoovering all the car park. Before, it, before the wind picks up and it ends up going in the river. Um, Take you over here. Oh, 
and that sits up there, nice and snug. I can feel the lip up here, there's no gap. Down there's no gap. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm holding the camera. But this stuff is super flexy. So to make the shape of the boat, really, really simple. So what I need to do, not now, because it's getting dark, but that's me cut now. So I've got a lot of hoover so I need to hoover all this up. But tomorrow, if it's a nice day or the next day, or whenever I get a nice day, well, actually I should probably wash it tonight. It's getting dark now, but I need to wash this, get all the old silicons and stuff off, uh, and prepare it ready for fitting. Also I need to do things like this, prep all this old paint here, get this sanded off, get that all prepared and ready. Probably get it some sort of like epoxy primer. Um, yeah, just to, yeah, on epoxy primer, just to make that a bit nice. Get all that scabbiness before fitting these. What I need to do though before I fit these is the front edges are going to be a bit brutal because they're square. So I'm thinking I might put a chamfer on. I may not, because I say I may not, the reason I say I may not is I need to look at the metal ribbon strakes, how they attach on, if it's right angles or chamfers, or if I need to reset it, recess it. So I'm going to have a look at them soon. So I want to so these don't get rubbed away with um, the lines. I want to put so the cleats here. I want to put a nice stainless steel rubbing strake inserted or whatever they're made of. So it rubs on the metal rather than tearing a hole out of that. Anyway, I better stop talking and get this hoovered up before it gets dark. Um, yeah, so there'll be more to come on this but absolutely amazing material. You see how easy that went through it. That's done six lengths of 3.6. It's not even a new blade. Um, it's just like machining wood. Everything about it behaves like wood. Um, yeah, well chuffed with it. Really, really chuffed. I'll, uh, I'll, show, I'll show you more in the very near future. Not finished yet. And that is uh, rammed full of it. Hey guys, it's about, uh, it's not about to be o'clock in the afternoon. A long day collecting race boys and stuff. But I borrowed the club's uh, chop saw, thinking I'd get some nice scarf joints. Not that I'm there, I'm just doing the front. But I wanted to get some nice sort of long, deep cuts. That only goes to 45 degrees. That might not be enough, but I'll have a little play. So I've got my my plastic wood from Kedal here. It's a two-man job really, or two-person job, but I'm on my jack, so I'm gonna try and do what I can do with clamps and stuff. I'll have a go. If it all, you know, if it's just too much like hard work and it's I'm failing miserably, I'll uh I'll wait and I'll wait for Sam or someone to come give me a hand. So I've cut my 45 degree front and I'm gonna tuck that up in here. Now behind here is for the foam and it's pretty much inaccessible. I know I've made it a bit accessible now with the hatch I've put in, but I'm going to stick with what they had originally, which is just self-tapping bolts going through. Um, I'll stay with that, I think. Make life easier. Um, as I've, I've filled the holes here, so I'll just, I can read all them river I want, which makes life a bit easier. Where it becomes interesting is where I'm using the pre-drilled holes that go through into the kids' room. I need to get the measurements from them score it onto here, make sure I've got the correct height as well, and then drill the holes. I want to see where this length comes to, and see if there's any good, pl good place for a join as well, because I want to put a bolt through the join, um, or very close to. So I need to see if that works out or not. So I've got a bit of jiggery pokery to do, but what I'm going to do now, first of all I'm going to take the length of this, I need to go and find my tape measure. Um, so I've just cut, it was 3.6 metres, I've cut the end off. So I'm going to work out point to back, see where it goes. And see if I'm better off slashing it earlier down somewhere. Work out the best places for the joins. Once I've got that, I say I mark my my, hole, my existing holes, zeros onto there. My thinking behind that is A, stops me having to fill and drill more holes. But also doing it on my own. I could get a clamp up on the front up there somehow, some way, 
um, and then work down here, put a screw in, clamp again, maybe get inside if I can and put a nut on it. Not do it up, just hold it in place. If I can get it all held in place-ish with the bolts in place, I'll then grab someone from the clubhouse to hold a screwdriver while I get in and do the nuts up. That's my thought process. It could all go completely wrong. And if it does, then I'll know to, to wait and wait till I've got help doing it. But that's not my style, so I'll do what I can do. So I'm gonna tune off for a minute quickly, take my measurements, because I can't hold this and tape measure and everything else. Uh, I'll try and do some form of um, maybe a time lapse or put music over the top or catch some footage and explain as and when I need to. But this is a un unknown territory to me, so it'll be fun. All right, I'll speak to you in a minute. for getting me started on this front front bow because it tucks in just under there about five millimeters so that helped me massively when it comes to me getting this started so i've just cut it to length again i'd rather do a longer scarf joint you know that 135 or something like it is but 45 is all i'm going to get with the the tools i've got which will bring us down to i think it's this hole here so it should come just short of that so the other one will tie it down and hold the other the other join in i think that's how it works from my limited knowledge of uh, doing this so all i'm going to do now is record some measurements um make sure i double check the heights mark it on the uh on the material drill some pilot holes see if it works Every day's a school day. Hey guys, so I've got the, uh, the original A4 stainless countersinks. I was going to turn back to Bogner and clean them up on my bench windy wheel, but I never got around to it. But I will put um, a wire brush over them before I put them in. But yeah, I'll reuse these. The cost of stainless at the minute, why, why replace it? Give them a good clean up, bang them back in. So I've marked my holes as you may or may not have seen on video I've recorded the distances and then the height from the step here to the hole and then we've sort of recorded hey guys so that's quickly whacked that up I've drilled one hole and it fits ish <laughs> it's in a hole um, I've got these clamps that are gonna just check and see if they would help and they are actually gonna help me Let's see if these smaller ones will be any benefit or not. Um, I was going to get a screwdriver. I don't want to start just hammering it in. I want to make sure this screws in and goes in nicely. Uh, if it does, I'll take it all down. Double check the measurements. Redraw the rest of the holes. Um, yeah. Let's see how it goes. Woo! Right, I'll tune back in in a second. I'm gonna find a screwdriver. Like I say, I'll try and buzz that, buzz that screw. Yep, I threw that, that screwed in nicely. I still want another five, six millimeters to go when that's flush against here. 
I've got music in the boat, so I can't take you in the boat to see it. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna nip inside and make sure I can see that protruding through. And once I've counted sunk it, it will be enough that I can get a nut on there. Just because it's different material off to on. Um, I don't know how sunk in the other ones were because they were full of dowels. So these bolts might not be long enough or I might have to sink these a little bit further and then backfill it with silicon or something like the guy who sold it to me suggested. But I'll go and have a look and then I'll, I'll explain after. Right, it's tight, but it'll, it'll go nicely. Especially if I sink the head down a millimetre or two. And that'll give me, if I don't like the look of the stainless steel heads, I can just then get the, uh, the black silicon over the top like the guy suggested. But, yeah. So, I'm gonna pull this down now. I say recheck the measurements. Once I'm happy, drill them. And then I'll use seeker or something, splidge, splidge it along, put it back up, bolts through, clamp it up, and uh, try and get some nuts on. But I'm gonna get it down now. Uh, I'm not gonna be filming measuring, but I will film me putting it back up. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, so I've drilled and countersunk and realised the self tappers that I need to put in further up, it looked nicer, probably more uniformed if I pre-drilled the holes in this now to be the same distance apart. I know these differ a little bit, but in and around, same sort of thing, all the way down, just to make it look a bit, bit prettier, uh, especially if I keep the stainless heads rather than covering it up. So I'm just gonna measure and drill them out now. The only thing is, the self-tapping monstrosities that are in there, uh, Philip said. So it's not gonna look nice, but they're still A4 stainless. It's better than uh, better than nothing. But anyway, I wanna get the measurements on this for the head and everything. Uh, say equal distances and pre-drill. So I wanna get on with that, and then uh, I'll see you for the, for the putting up. Okay, I'm gonna give it a generous portion of uh, Seeker 291 around the uh, holes and uh, whack it up, see what happens. See if I make a big black mess all over my, my, my shiny white boat. thinking of putting it on the boat rather than the, uh, the robin strip because it all goes picked on it shouldn't bounce around on my shiny white hole too much okay I've got screws I'm gonna hang a clamp on me Access holster, hindering my access. Let's clamp.
Let's not finish like that, that will pull in a little bit from the nuts. Alright, that's it I think. Well, I need to do the self-tappers up there. But I'm going to get someone to 
hold a screwdriver out here while I dive in and get some nuts on there. So I'll tune in once I've done that and then we do the uh, self tappers. Hey guys, I just got my friend Mike to help me do up the four nuts and bolts. It's a great thing about Aaron Yacht Club, there's always someone to help and they're willing to help, which is pretty amazeballs. So I'll look for the top, see what it looks like. So there's a bit of a gap there where I need to wind that back in. It's gonna have its last bolt going through. But I stand on nose here, still needs screwing in. Not too shabby. Hey guys, common sense says now that I've got my tools out and everything to continue with a rubbing stake and get the rest of it down here. However, what I'm thinking is it's four o'clock. My head gaskets come for snow goose. I can't take Fox Lady out this weekend because she's sat in the car park. Snow goose, if I get the engine running, I can take out. So uh, I am going to tidy up now. I'm happy that you know that, that's gone in. That's, that was my trial piece. I'm really happy with how that's gone on and how it looks. Um, and I'll continue doing the rest with the help of Sam or Matt or whoever comes down to help and we'll get the rest of that run down. But I think that's perfect for the style of the Foxy Lady. Let's continue running that down. I've got them all there, good to go. Amongst all my engine servicing rubbish. And then I'll get the other side done. I'm also thinking tomorrow, if it's a nice day, like it's forecast, in the morning, the sun's over here, nice and warm. I can be out here in a, in a t-shirt, getting this done, rather than now, sun's going down. It's the other side of the boat, a little bit chilly. I'm not getting any younger. Um, so yeah, happy with that. I noticed as well, as good as them little bits of kit are, the join here is a little bit, a little bit like that. So I'm not overly happy about the quality of the join I'm going to get there. So I might have to do a bit of jiggery pokery, a bit of filing, a bit of grinding, a bit of yeah, get a little pipe power file. It might just be my eyeballs. It might be absolutely fine. But it looks to me a little bit proud. I might have to do a little bit of jiggery pokery to make that nice. But. I'm also going to leave a bit of a gap because it's plastic wood and the expansion. I'll leave a good sort of five millimeter gap and I'll just fill it in with uh, black silicon over the top just to smooth it in. But it's still got room to move and do all its, do all its stuff. I'm going to quickly see where 3.6 meters will take me next, which is probably going to be pretty much down to the stanchion. And after that, it's all little bits, nice and easy. But yeah, she's getting there. Right, I'm gonna tidy up and go down to Snow Goose and I'll tune in when I'm down there if I'm doing anything exciting. Hey guys, uh, as you can probably tell from the state of me, I'm absolutely knackered. But I've <laughs> just got back from uh, got a hard day's work. So that was the first part of the, uh, the video of me putting the rub rails on. This is car six, four to six weeks later now. I'm massively playing catch up, but I'm just going to get all this video editing done. Try and get one out if I can, not every day. Just get it out so I can get to the crane in and get back to a level keel where I can then sort of start producing not a weekly video of current sort of content. But where I had that few weeks off between finishing in the army and starting my job, I've just done so much, got so much footage. Um, I don't want to delete like loads and loads and loads. I want to try and capture the full journey a fox lady's been on only trouble is editing takes a long time and i haven't got a lot at the minute um so I'll, I'll do my best to get it out as quickly as i can what i will say is though if anyone's watched this video looking at and or for rub rails this kedal stuff is amazing really 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 good i'll see the next video i'll try and do would be the, the the rest of the boat being done or the rest of that hull of the boat I didn't really film the second half. Um, same sort of process, but I'll do, you know, the next video will be the rest of the boat, amongst many other things. But yeah, so cost wise, if you're looking at hardwood, really expensive, 
and the best wood in the world it rots if you're looking at buying sheets of plastic you've got to cut it yourself expensive Kedal will do any shape you want round square rectangular probably hexagonal if you ask them um and uh, yeah it's, I, I, I haven't got a bad thing to say about it. Um, I'll put a link in the description down below for the company. Uh, but yeah, really, really recommend. I'm going to use it for my uh, my rail that my traveller's on around the back. The woodwork's all rotten. And the stuff I've got left over, I'm, I'm going to use it for that, which will be a future video. Um, yeah, I'm that. It's good. It's really, really good, honestly. <laughs> right, I'll shut up going about that now. And I'm going to probably have a little nap or something but i hope you enjoyed the video uh massive thank you to my patreon blue dog oz you'll see my links down below for buying me a coffee and i haven't been bought a coffee for a long time nudge nudge wink wink <laughs> so i'll uh i'll speak to you in a bit cheers guys